Would you tell us a little bit about yourself? Introduce yourself. Uh, thanks for inviting me in the first place. Uh, my name is Dasha or Daria. Both it's okay. <laughs> I'm from Russia, Siberia. Siberia. And yeah, if you're talking a little, little bit like for better imagining, like imagining where, where is it, it's like very close to Mongolia. Okay. I check it on the Google. Uh, you can drive there for 18 hours. Like from one side to the other? I mean, from my place to Mongolia. So oh. it's just like that close. Uh, because I know a lot of people think about <laughs> Eastern Europe, just like somewhere from there. No, it's just like Mongolia, China, no uh, Asian influence. And another big thing about my place, I know a lot of Americans knew about a uh, very famous uh, Trans-Siberian Railroad, right. which connect Moscow and Vladivostok. So we're exactly in the middle of this road. Okay. Yes. <laughs> So, so it takes a long time to drive anywhere, either direction? It's very long, but, you know, um, first of all, I'm from the biggest country in the world. For example, Novosibirsk country, it's from, um, from where I'm from, it's the same size as France. Just to imagine, it's just like huge mm -hmm. uh, in one case. But in another case, uh, road trip not so popular in our country because we don't have infrastructure. It's not safe, you have no idea where you're going to stay, can you have some food, you know, that's why we don't have like, hey, let's drive to Mongolia. <laughs> Never happened. Uh, yeah, we drive from here to Florida once uh, to just for summer trip, New Orleans, of mm -hmm. course. Um, drive a little bit inside Texas, kind of Houston, Dallas, San Antonio, uh, to shore, of course, like Mustang Island and South Padre Island. Okay. Uh, and that's it. <laughs> Not so much, um, but uh, like in my list, there are, like, there are a lot of places which uh -huh. I supposed to be. Uh, four years. So. And what, what was your first impression when you got here? Was it like you thought it would be or was it different? No, not at all. Um, first of all, if you're talking about Texas, there are a lot of stereotypes. Some, And it's not like stereotypes kind of like fools, like this. It will be like this, this and that. It's kind of pictured like cowboys and guns and, you know, like boots and mm. cows, like the like desert, cactuses, like all that. And it's it's cool and very like like from a movie, but you never think about this place as a nice place to stay and move and live. So originally, it's our friends move here, mm -hmm. and they invite us, and they say just like, "Hey, can you just like Texas?" <laughs> like, when you think about California, maybe Florida, but Texas, like, <laughs> like let us like like harness. You just like it's so bad, and you will struggle someone else and. <laughs> In your neighborhood, you know, just like but, true. But you've changed your mind since then? <laughs> yes. Uh, actually, it was our plan because we live in New Jersey four years before we moved here. And I love New Jersey and I love U.S., but I never want to live there because it's slightly colder. You know, I spent all my life in Siberia with six months straight of winter covered by snow. I, enough. You know, like yeah. I want to live in nice warm, hot, you know, like place, island, not island. So, and I, idea was discover a place when we was to stay. Mm -hmm. So we thought after we got a like, green card and documents, we just going to try places, you know, like we're going to stay in Florida, in California, maybe here, because my husband in IT and we need, um, you know, like some good job and of course, like now surroundings. And we decided to start from here. Mm -hmm. And I love Austin. <laughs> I just fall in love, like really, uh, in one month we, we realized, okay, we're going to buy a house, we're going to stay uh, here for a long time because it's, it's tiny, mm -hmm. but it has everything I want and it's very close, like, no, I need to have downtown, yeah. I need to have a city because I'm a city person, but I don't need too big city as in New York or Dallas, here extremely nice size for me i have it and i join it and i can, can cross it from a to b like for 20 minutes 
Yeah. Yes, but I love Austin, like lifestyle here, just park somewhere in downtown, go around, trails, views, then yeah. you decide, okay, stop, just turn 10 minutes and you eat in lunch in restaurant and everything possible to do it by walk. Everything you need. Everything you need, if you want to spend time in the water, please, if you want view restaurant, please, nice hotel here, mm -hmm. spa, everything. Cool. So, I love this place. <laughs> yes, uh, especially when Corona hit, uh, a lot of family from New York and California and Florida, all places we should have before, <laughs> start moving here because obviously Texas is one of more comfortable states right now uh, about Corona policies, about isolation, restrictions, so and people start moving and they love Austin. So, originally it was okay, like, let's go, like, we run away, and then they move here, and just like, <laughs> wow, it's what nice to be in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, are you ever out in public, and you see, like, another family at the store or something, and you think, I bet they're Russian? Yes. But even before you hear them, how, how can you tell? Well, uh, it's more about uh, women and kids. Uh -huh. Originally, I don't know why, uh, our women spent much more time... Um, thinking about how they appear. <laughs> I'm not trying to say is it good or is it bad, but when you see a woman with child and, you know, like, uh, child clothes much, you know, like, um, <laughs> like leggings much to t-shirt and it's just like in the same tone bows, they rush on like, like a huge <laughs> possibility. And then you get up close and try to hear them talking. Uh, yeah, so, but it's just like very obvious. Like even from a distance, like aha, uh -huh, like she's probably is, and yes, most likely you're right. Okay, so I'm wondering, um, um, there's some things that Texans love to do, some places we love to visit. And I'm gonna just read a list, and you tell me if you've been there yet. Have you been to H E B? Sure. All the time. Favorite yeah. grocery store. Uh, how about Bucky's? Uh, I visited a few times. It's not my. It's interesting, uh, but it's just like really far away. It's kind oh, of. Okay. Uh, it, outside of town yeah it's just like when you travel somewhere mm. originally it's like nice place to stay for bathroom for food for shopping i don't know why i'd rather go to another places <laughs> but when my friends go with me and she's like let's go to bike <laughs> fine fine wow. and i love store there <laughs> how about whatever uh yes tried once didn't like it I bet I try. <laughs> Have you been to the Alamo? Yes, it's how, beautiful. Padre Island? Yes, sure. Um, how about uh, the Riverwalk in San Antonio? Of course! All right. It was one of the first places which I visited. Have you been to the stockyards in Fort Worth? No, I know I've been in Fort Worth. It's on my list too, but didn't happen yet. How about the Houston Space Center? Not yet. Um, Big Bend? No. Well, you should, you should yes. uh, make that make It was a good start and then no, no, no. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. It takes a while to go through all that. Well, yeah, especially, you know, um, when you have kids, certain age, driving so far, and mm -hmm. Space Center, it's just like for a little bit older age, in my opinion. So, but of course it's going to happen <laughs> soon, I hope. You can be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Um, actually, it's a good question. I never had a question like about Texan. Usually, if uh, people asking me about my experience, they kind of say about US. Okay. It, it's not like, hey, this is Texas. This is you know, like person from New Jersey. On my opinion, like I feel here very safe and welcome. Uh, people around me feel like very friendly. Uh, and I love that uh, it's a lot of immigrants, but it's kind of very balancing. Um, because in New Jersey, when I'm trying, I'm look when I look for a nice place to stay, it was just like, oh, this is Indians, this is Arabian. It was just like, like more divided. Just like this is here, this mm -hmm. is there, this is Russian community the same. So what I like about Austin is just like huge blend and mix. So like our closest neighbors, just like the American traditional. And other neighbors from China, mm -hmm. I have Indians on the same tree, we <laughs> Russian obvious, yes. So, and it feels nice in one place. Uh, and second, you know, like 
it feels like Texan, like they more relaxed, they know what they want and like, and you know, it's huge, it's like huge stable state, rich state, and it's noticeable. So I'm really love living here. Cool. <laughs> it's nice to have you here. Thanks. I'm wondering, do you ever hear people speak with an accent, a Texas accent that's hard to no. understand? No. Or I, does it just sound like regular English? Yes. Uh, for me, I cannot figure it out. South or North accent. It might be that I cannot understand this person at all, <laughs> but it's more about age and habits to speak with immigrants. It's very noticeable then, you know, especially it's elderly people who are surrounded by the like friends from here. Uh, of course, they had experience with Saxon, but long time ago, maybe with grandparents who moved here originally, yeah. and they just do not understand. They, or, or young people. Because they use a lot of like fragile words, <laughs> you know, like some specific, like, like why, for example, your boyfriend called boo. Like what? <laughs> I, I know, know boo about Halloween and now <laughs> this term using to your spouse or partner, it was right. just like, bring your boo. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> so this thing is yeah, difficult I, I, I to understand. I don't know where that came from. I don't think that's from Texas. <laughs> I, yeah, so that's why I do not understand. Is it from Texas or from US itself? But sometimes it's extremely complicated. <laughs> I'm trying. I never had about it. <laughs> it's from an indigenous word that means friend or friendly or oh, really? ally. Um, yeah, and so. So it's just like most friendly state. <laughs> yes. Why you have like Lone Star state except like instead of friendly people? <laughs> Well, you see it on the signs that say drive Texas friendly, um, instead yes. of alluding to the fact that Texas means friendly. And no one understands that. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I came up with a couple of sort of old fashioned Texas expressions mm -hmm. that you probably haven't heard since you got here, but I want to see if you can guess what they mean. Sure. What do you think it means when you say someone is knee high to a grasshopper? Knee high to a grasshopper? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, um, like thinking about something sports, you know, like keep your knee high as a grass okay. but they probably not. I'll use it in a complete sentence, this will help. Um, I've been playing football since I was knee high to a grasshopper. Oh, I was, uh, I was the same level as a grasshopper jumping, so yeah. I was like extremely small. Right, cool. I was a kid yeah. and I was very okay. small. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> it's helped. All right. Um, what do you think a frog strangler is? Frog strangler. I have no it, idea. It describes a kind of weather. We'll say that, that, <laughs> that rainstorm was a real frog strangler. Does that make any sense? No, but <laughs> I can bet that it's unpleasant weather. <laughs> it, it, it rains so much that even the frogs, which can swim, they, they drown <laughs> in, in the rain. <laughs> Well, yeah, it right. might happen in Texas. Yeah, when it rains, it really rains. All our phrases about snow can guess about rain. So speaking of language, we first met when you were my conversation partner and I was taking a Russian class at the community college. And so I want you to teach us a couple words in Russian. <laughs> sure. Um, how, how do you say hello, for example? Привет. Привет. Mm -hmm. Привет. Now, what's the really long, complicated way to say hello? Uh, we have tons of versions. Like, uh, like, it's a more polite, uh, like, for example, when you enter to audience, yeah. it's just like, Здравствуйте. You say that slowly. Yes, Здравствуйте. <laughs> but that has too many consonants all in a row. <laughs> and again, Здравствуйте, it's a short version from Здравия желаю. Oh, wow. Or kind of... I wish you well, something like that, or be healthy. That's very polite. Like, здрасте. Yes. <laughs> okay. So we'll stick with привет. Привет, привет. is easy to say. <laughs> and how would you say to somebody who just arrived in Russian, welcome to Texas? Добро пожаловать в Техас. Добро пожаловать в Техас. Exactly. All Good. Right. <laughs> and, and you improved since <laughs> then. <laughs> I've been practicing. <laughs> and how do you say, we love Russians? Мы любим русских. Мы любим русских. Русских. 
Окей. Okay. Yes. Спасибо. <laughs> На здоровье. <laughs> Yeah, uh, well, it's a good question because I'm from a very specific place. Um, officially, it's in Novosibirsk. Mm -hmm. Novosibirsk, it's the third biggest city in Russia. And some people call it uh, as a um, like capital of Siberia. Of course, mm -hmm. it's not official capital, but it's pretentive. Uh, this big naming. Uh, and uh, it's very easy to remember because it's kind of New York. New Siberia, mm. which translates to Russia, Novo Sibirsk, okay. like New Siberia. So, um, Even though it's not a new city, it's hundreds of years old, probably. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but I'm not from like big downtown city. I'm very far away, kind of 40 minutes driving. And um, uh, the place I, um, I was born and grown up, it's called Academic Town. Okay. And it was it was built kind of almost 70 years ago and originally is a science center for whole Russia. It was idea just collect the brilliant uh, specialists who are going to work um, together, mm -hmm. kind of uh, combine uh, physics and chemistry and math and you know like these people are going to work like together with each other and we're going to have a great result. Mm. So it was very ambitious project. Uh, they create a lot of institutes. Uh, for example, my granddad, he's a very famous mathematician. Uh, of course, like it's a problem about distancing in Russia. Like not a lot of people want to move to Siberia. Let's be honest, it's <laughs> far away from Moscow. It's not more comfortable yeah. place to stay. And originally it was a jail, like if <laughs> to like exactly <laughs> honest, yes. It was just like like our government in Moscow use all this Siberian land as a free jail, you know, just send people there and we do not care what's going to next, right. you know. <laughs> it's so far from Moscow. Uh, so that's why now Academic Town, it's science center for whole Siberia, which huge too. Mm. Uh, but yes, it was like, can you imagine like young people, like very adventurous. I guess like it's slightly comparable to US, right? How it's happened, like really adventurous people who can stay and leave their places and move somewhere to Siberia where they build in a new city. So, and it was very Pioneers. specific people. And it was very interesting to grow there. Intellectuals. Yes, and smartest, adventurous. Um, I have problem with it. Как по-русски. Passionable, in other words. Mm, so, yeah. it's just yeah. like... And they was all around the same age. They just finished university and, you know, they... Like, they going somewhere to build a new science. So it's just like, it's amazing. So I'm very proud of them when I think about it, because my dad, he's moved from Moscow. Yeah. So. <laughs> in, the, in the 70s or the 80s, or when did it start? Uh, they started building, building it in 1957. Mm. So, of course, my dad go there a little bit later. Um, but yeah. yeah, so and it's very beautiful. It's created and built right in the middle of the forest. Mm -hmm. So uh, they try to repeat idea about American style of university when you have university and campus around this university. Okay. So you have a lot of students. You have a lot of university life, like, and that's why I guess maybe I love Austin so much because it's feel familiar. It's. Huh very close to place when I was born. Of yeah. course, it's opposite side of this planet, but sometimes it feels like similar. <laughs> A similar spirit. <laughs> yes, yes. Spirit of young and like new futures, new life, mm -hmm. new opportunities. So it's in the air. Everything, it was very difficult. Uh, in one case, it was most easiest uh, like moving which you can imagine because um, it was my husband company who moved us so who did like all documents they bought us tickets they provide us place for first months to leave you know it was a lot of support 
But at the same time, everything new, like everything here works slightly different. For example, in Russia, we don't have credit history. You don't have social security numbers. And when you move here, you cannot take or create this credit history because you just never exist in this country. <laughs> and you try to transfer your experience from Russia, but they not really understand what does it mean. And no one want to uh, rent you a good apartment, for example, just because like, hey, you don't have a credit history. It's just right, like a lot right. of complication. And exactly in my situation, I was pregnant. It was five months of pregnancy. I didn't speak English. <laughs> So it was stupid. I thought I, I thought that my English is like slightly bad, but when I move, I realized it's like not even existed. You know, I, I even my name I, is Daria. That situation. Yes, even even my name, like my name is Daria. Sometimes people just like reacting like, what was that? But it's just like, hey, my name is like, what's wrong with this phrase? And of course, you do not understand like what's other people saying. You just like yeah. no. And sometimes, like, I hear a lot of advice, just like, ask, just like, ask, like, what, what did you, like, I do not, I did not understand anything. <laughs> like, not what, what I supposed to ask. <laughs> Where do I start? Yes. Now, it's okay, of course, like, when I understand the mostly mm. of part, I can say, hey, you know, I didn't get this word. Or just like, can you rephrase it for yeah. me? Because it's just like, this construction slightly not okay. But when you... <laughs> just have no idea what's going on and I still remember like conversation with like a pediatrician and doctor my daughter I just like literally prepare like 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 like, <laughs> like a whole work you know like I I made a create a list questions right. in Russian and then I translated it and then this <laughs> it and was then a list of answers that they might give. It, probably yes, because of course you Google possible answers. It's all Russian doing yeah. <laughs> about here. So like a lot of this stuff, like even now, uh, you know, like you feel awkward very often because like our nation, like we're much more straightforward. For me, it's okay if I feel it's not okay, verbalize it and say, hey, you know, like now. But sometimes, very often for local people, it might be too much, too much straightforward. You're supposed to be polite, but just like... In and, indirect. Yeah, yeah, and you know, like, you're trying your best, yeah. especially when you start working, especially when you're working with people. You're literally trying your best, but you're always somewhere in the border, you know? You feel like, okay, it, it was not fine right now, but person in front of you going to really rate it because you're an mm. immigrant. And you just like... Hey, like, give me a book, you know, <laughs> how you can act in this different situation. Yeah. So, like, everything, like, simple stuff, kind of electric company that you need to do it extra, all these bills, how it's work, yeah. taxes. Luckily, like, mostly of this, that I like, think my husband did, but I figured it out with everything about kids. School system, still, I remember, I almost cried, like. Because it was so different. Totally different, different yeah. ages, different system, working differently, buses, just like how I have to feel like, well, tell me your bus number. <laughs> Who are you? I thought, I thought you were going to tell me my bus number. Just like, luckily, luckily, I'm so happy and thankful because it's happened before coronavirus. It was open schools, it was oh, open yeah. offices, and I'm literally drive there like, like, like each weekend for sure. Each week I drive there, come there and say, hey, I'm apologize. It's me again. Hi, hello. Yeah, I do not understand. Explain me. And they spend a lot of time just repeating stuff because I literally do not understand. Yeah. Just like, I even don't ask why. Okay, just because. <laughs> but like how, what? And my daughter part of Girl Scouts. It's so, oh, I'm so behind, you know, <laughs> after each meeting, especially when they discuss cookies, like, hey, who has, like, like any more questions? And I sit there, just like, can you start over? So many questions. <laughs> yeah, well, all my questions just, like, start again. <laughs> because I understand, like, in surroundings somewhere, you know, approximately I get an idea, but I do not understand anything like in details. Right. And sometimes it's very important to understand exactly what it means because one word can switch everything, mm. especially in documents, you know, it's just yeah. like. So, yeah. so, do you have any suggestions for people who are trying to make immigrants to yes. Texas feel more comfortable? What, yes. what, what should we do? Learn the language. 
Learn the language. Because, yes, because in Russia we have uh, it's kind of very strong idea that oh it's very difficult to get a foreign language. It's almost impossible. Of course, when you are like you have a special skills for languages, mm -hmm. yes. But other than that, it's much easier, and it's going almost automatically when you move to that speaking country. And actually, it was one of the reasons why I want to try immigration, because I thought like, hey, I love traveling, I want to be more communicate, you know, I want to communicate much better with people, so I need to know English in good level. How I can, how I can do it? Immigration, just like stupid. Like, really, I want to return and say, hey, you know, like, now you have two years. Go to school. Learn the rule. How you're supposed to speak correctly. Because you cannot pick it up from the air. It's yeah. never going to appear automatically. It might happen when you know the language perfectly. When you learn it ten years in the school and then five years in university. You can read book, but you are comfortable to speak. Yes. Mm -hmm. When you move to this country, it might happen automatically. But if you never know the language, it's never going to... Like, you cross the border and you're still in the same point, you know, yeah. nothing happens.